You see, English medieval buildings um, are interested in show, but they tend to rely on surprise and confinement rather than simple visual excess. So, if you consider English cathedrals, I don't know whether you've noticed, but they are always set in closes in uh, the corner of a town. So, uh, here you see um, a, a close, cathedral close, you can see the gates here, um, a, a, a cathedral completely and utterly um, hedged in in the middle of um, a town. Whereas, um, if you go to uh, Milan, uh, there's no wall, there's no nothing, there it is, in your face, showing off. You don't have to go through um, to anything inside. So, um, this tradition um, uh, perhaps isn't quite enough to explain why the London Guildhall is such a reticent building compared with somewhere like Bremen, but uh, it does uh, explain that there is a totally tradition, a different tradition in England of placing your public buildings within cities. So, there is the concept of the precinct, but I think to get to the heart of why the Guildhall looked as it did, we need to consider something else. And that is the English love of processions. Now, when you look at English public and ceremonial architecture before about 1700, you will see that the English basically always preferred entourage to architecture. Magnificent dress, velvets, pearls, laces, horse trappings, banners, trumpets, flags, litters, and above all, extravagant number of attendants were the stuff of English royal and civic pageantry. Here is that um, famous painting at Hampton Court, the embarkation, Henry VIII getting onto his boat, and it, oops, and here you see um, great parade um, of courtiers, uh, when people came to the Tudor court, what they uh, commented on most of all was the extraordinary number of people rest, dressed in extraordinary um, rich clothes. Um, this is the coronation procession of Edward VI. So here is the Tower of London. Uh, here is the, the city. This is St. Paul's Cathedral. Um, and here is the procession going through the streets, going down here, going here, Going around here, around here, around here, going here to Westminster. And here are the, you know, the thousands of people all watching, people hanging out of their windows, the, their houses draped with tapestries and carpets and flags. This is what the English really liked. And the medieval streets of London were not just functional arteries for conveying people and goods, they were also ceremonial routes. They were the pathways for religious and civic processions that studied the annual calendar. And central to this was this concept that I've been talking about of the precinct and the linkages between the individual precincts in the uh, city. And so, the clergy at St. Paul's Cathedral would process around their precinct on feast days of the year, and during Whit Week, there was a huge diocesan-wide uh, procession round the whole city. Now, this isn't St. Paul's Cathedral, this isn't even an English manuscript, but what it shows is an ecclesiastical procession going round um, a, a, a church. And here is Cardinal Wolsey, uh, riding on his donkey. Um, he's here, Lord Chancellor, and he's in a procession. He is processing from his house at York Place down um, King Street to uh, Westminster Hall, um, going through the, um, the gate of the precinct of Westminster uh, Palace to the Court of Star Chamber in the Great Hall, where he's going to sit um, in judgment and hear um, the court cases. So these processions from precinct to precinct are absolutely vital.